Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your second SAS tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how we can install and compile SAS on our computer. <laughs> Alright then, so the first thing we need to do is install SAS on our computer and there's two ways of doing this. We can either install a standalone application or we can do it via the command line. Now, if you choose to do it via the command line, you're going to need to install Ruby first of all because SAS is written in Ruby. So you can do that on Linux by using this sudo command. On Windows, you can go to the Ruby installer, which is this website right here, and just click the download button. I'll leave this link down below. And on Mac, for you guys, it's already installed, so you don't need to do anything. So that's if you want to go down the command line route. I'm not going to do that for this tutorial. I'm just going to use one of these standalone applications because it's much simpler to get going. So I'm going to use this one right here, Prepros, or however you pronounce that. And uh, this has a free version or a paid version, okay? Now, the paid version is $29, and basically what that does is take away a little pop-up that pops up every 15 minutes or so asking you to buy it or something, okay? I'm just going to use the free trial version on this, which is fully functional. Like I say, it does everything that the paid version does, except it throws up that pop-up. So what you want to do is go to download, and then just choose the operating system and that's going to download it onto your computer. Just go through the installation steps, dead simple, and uh, then fire it up. Mine's on my desktop right here, so I'm just going to double click that to bring it up. And you're going to see when this first starts, the little pop-up that I'm on about, this thing right here says, thanks for using Prepros, uh, continue trial, buy or activate. So all you need to do is keep on clicking continue every time it throws this message up or buy, it. it's up to you. So right here we have a blank screen and what we need to do is drag our project folder into that, okay? And then what that's going to do is recognize any SAS files that we have and when we ask it to, it's going to process those into CSS files, all right? So you can see right here in Atom, I've got open those project files that I've uploaded to my GitHub website, okay? And you can see this styles.css uh, file right here is currently empty. Now that's where we're going to output all of our SAS files to. Okay, now what I want to do is go into the SCSS folder. This is where we're going to keep our SAS files. There's nothing in there at the minute. I'm going to right click and create a new file. And I'm going to create a new SAS file. And I'll call this the same as our styles.css, except this is styles.scss. Okay, and we could use sas.sas. And that's a slightly different syntax, but we still can use it. There's two methods, either .sas or .scss. I'm going to use the .scss format for this playlist purely because it's a little simpler to get into. It's more like CSS, so if you're familiar with CSS, it's going to be easier to get the hang off. But, I mean, once you're comfortable with that, you could look into .sass, and maybe we'll look at that later on in the course towards the end. Okay, so let's create that file and then close this down a little bit. Then we need to open up our project folder in this window right here. So just go to Add Project and then navigate to the course files from a GitHub page and open up the base folder. So you can see right here, I've got all those folders in there. I'm just gonna select this folder and it's gonna throw them up right here. And what it's gonna do is recognize our SAS files right here, styles.scss. And if we click on that, you're gonna notice some options right here. First of all, it's suggesting an output path to us. This is where it's gonna convert our SAS file into a CSS file and this is where it's going to dump it, okay? So it's in the CSS folder right here, and it's going to dump it in this file right here, okay? If we didn't already have this created, it would still suggest something like this because it's going to take this file name, styles.css, and it's going to put it in a CSS folder and call it styles.css, okay? So these options right here, auto-compile just means that when we've made a change on this file right here, our SAS file, and we save it, it's gonna auto compile that to CSS and output the result into this file right here, okay? So that's cool, we wanna keep that ticked. This right here, use libsass, is just gonna speed up the whole process. Um, it just makes it a little bit faster. So keep those two ticked. And uh, if we wanna manually process a file, we can do. If we do that right now, nothing's gonna happen because our SAS file is currently empty, okay? But if we write a simple rule in here, doesn't have to be anything, it's just made up, and I'm gonna say color red. Right, so once we've done that, if we press save, control S or something, then you're gonna notice this little pop-up box that says styles.scss compiled successfully. 
that my friends is this in action this auto compile so when we saved it it's compiled that now and it's put the output into this file right here okay so if we go ahead and check our styles.css then you're going to see exactly the same now as our styles.scss so it's taken this sas file and converted it into css now there's no difference at the minute and that's because we've basically just used pure css in this sas file and we can do that if we wanted to but let me just do a simple example using some of the extra features in SAS, and you don't have to worry about these for now. I'm gonna go into detail about what these are later on. This is just to demonstrate how we're converting from one to the other. So I'm gonna nest the star right here and I'll say color blue, and then I'm gonna nest another style. I'll say, oops, color pink. All right, cool. So I'll save that now, and you're gonna notice this box again saying it's compiled successfully and if we have a look in our styles.css file now you're going to notice it's compiled that into normal css because this my friends is no longer normal css this is sas okay we can't do this in css so it's taken that and it's processed that into normal css which a browser can understand okay and the idea is that in our index file we don't link to any of the, uh, the sas files because like i say browsers don't understand sas we link to the styles.css, this thing right here. And because every time we save this and update this, it updates it here, right here, it outputs a new file here, then it's always gonna get the up-to-date styles.css. And that's what's gonna be used to style our web page. okay? So this right here will do exactly the same kind of thing as this, it's just compiled into something the browser understands. Make sense? Cool. All right, so that is how we install SAS and compile it. And by the way, just to uh, demonstrate something here, if we do some kind of uh, error, something you can't do in SAS and press save, then you're gonna get an error message right here saying unable to compile this file. And it says what the error is, which is pretty cool. So any questions, feel free to ask those down below. Otherwise guys, I'll see you in the very next video where we're gonna start writing our first SAS file.